Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have all of my IVF medications and I just wanted to show them to you guys. Uh, they just came in on Saturday. Today is Sunday, so yesterday, but I am in the process of repainting my kitchen island and I was not presentable for filming a video yesterday. So uh, it's not an unboxing video because uh, some of it had to be refrigerated, but this is what came in the box. So I have everything sitting here. I got one, two, three, four, five. I got six boxes of this plus three uh, individual ones. I got 33 vials of Menopure, Menopore, Menopure. So I got 33 of those. I put my extras in here. They come like this. And these have the liquid and these have a, I don't know if you can see it, a powder in them. And you actually mix these two before you inject them. I have not been trained on any of this stuff yet. So this is all new to me as well. And then it did come with these Q caps. I actually feel like Oh, these are Q caps too. I don't know what these are for. If you know what these Q caps are for, let me know. I feel like they might be for my Gonal F pin. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm gonna Keep going because, like I said, this stuff has to be refrigerated. I got my Gonal F Ready Jack pen. Yeah, I don't think, no, that Q cap is not for this because this is a pen. It has the medication in it. You dial it to your dosage that you need, and then it has these disposable uh, needles here so those are the ones that go with that so i got three of these 900 iu uh gonal f pins so i got three of those and then i got my trigger shot this is ovadril ovadril it is a pre-filled syringe I haven't even looked at it yet this is the one that you do right before your egg retrieval this is uh, this will make you test positive on a positive on a pregnancy test it causes your ovaries to release the eggs follicles something like that um so that the doctor can retrieve your eggs so that is exciting and i believe we do it like 36 hours before our egg retrieval so this is like the last step um after you go through all your injections i also got gauze and alcohol pads i'll probably have to get more of that a sh yeah a sharps container and then they didn't send me one of these um so i'm waiting on it but this is my lupron and they prescribed me two two-week kits this is what i start on first which i will be starting next week and it also comes with a bunch of needles and alcohol pads. Uh, 
And then it has this little vial loop on here. And oops, and that's what that looks like. There's like not very much in there, which I'm assuming that's how it's supposed to be. I will compare it to the one that's coming on Tuesday. But yeah, that is what I got. So I'm going to get this stuff put in the refrigerator and I'll be right back. Okay. So I got all of my stuff that had to be refrigerated put back into the fridge. And I wanted to show you guys also, this is my IVF calendar. So today is Sunday the 27th, 28th. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so I've been on birth control since June 3rd which by the way is making me feel like a crazy person and I've been really moody. I was feeling really nauseous on it and that has subsided. I started taking it before bed instead of when I woke up and that's helped with that, but it's made me not very nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm ready to be off of it, which I will stop taking it on July 14th. Yay. Okay, so here's the plan. After at least two weeks of my birth control pills, I start Lupron 20 units in the evening and I will be starting that on July 7th, so next week. Uh, it says to stop taking my birth control after I have been taking Lupron 20 units for eight days. I'm not sure why that is, but that's what it says. Uh, it says you may need to refill your birth control pills to have enough. I just went and picked up my birth control. And yeah, last birth control pills, July 14th. And then I am going to have a baseline ultrasound and blood draw on July 19th at 8.30 a.m. in Indianapolis. And that, um, it says you will have an ultrasound to ensure your ovaries are free of cysts and blood tests to check your estradiol levels after 12 days of taking Lupron 20 units. All of your ultrasounds for this cycle will be transvaginal. Fun. Okay, so yeah, date of baseline ultrasound and blood draw, July 19th at 8.30 a.m. It says, we will call you with the results of your baseline that same day to inform you that it is time to reduce your Lupron dose to 10 units. Ultrasound must be free of cysts and blood estradiol levels must be less than 35. You will remain on Lupron 10 units until you are instructed to take your HCG injection, and that is your trigger shot. Okay, so I was wrong. You do your... Tr no. You do your trigger shot at the end. So I must just stay on Lupron throughout my other shots. I don't know guys, I've never done this. We're in this together, we're learning together. And if you know stuff, you can comment below and tell me because this is so overwhelming. We go next week for our conference and training and all that. So I'll get a lot more information next week. So uh, let's see. At this time, you will also be instructed whether or not to begin following your stimulating medication. See, I just needed to read further. Begin following your stimulating medication calendar as planned. When you start your stimulating medications, you will be on stimulating medications for approximately 10 days. You and your partner will begin dox, doxycycline, an antibiotic, uh, 100 milligrams twice a day for 10 days 
and that's just to prevent infection for the egg retrieval and I'm not sure why Chad has to take it I'm assuming in case he has like any infections or whatever since they will be getting a, a sperm collection from him uh let's see Decrease Lupron to 10 units if instructed on July 19th. Start stimulating medications and the antibiotic on July 25th. On days four and five of stimulating medications, I will go back in for blood work and or ultrasound. And on that day, dosing will be provided up to the next monitoring date once the lab results are received. So I go in July 28th for labs only, and I get to do that in Bloomington. So that's nice that I don't have to drive as far. And then expect to return every couple of days at 8.30 a.m. Monday through Saturday to Indianapolis. For blood work and ultrasound thereafter. That's the part that's gonna stink, but it's not forever. If you don't know, I live like two hours from there, so that's gonna stink. Um, so, the evening of my HCG injection, the trigger shot, uh, I will not be taking Lupron or stimulating medicines except to take my trigger shot between medication days 9 through 12. Your egg retrieval is performed 36 hours after your trigger shot. So we won't know when that is until things start happening and we do monitoring and all that and and see how things are progressing so and then this is just like a little chart for me to keep track of my injections and appointments and things like that and yeah it says please note that we are unable to provide you with an exact date for your retrieval or transfer we're un we are only able to provide you with a window that these procedures may occur due to the fact that these events rely purely on your response to the medications. You will be informed of these procedure dates when the doctor determines you are ready. So we really don't know anything past like when we start and we will find out more as we go and as they do ultrasounds and blood work and things like that to see when it's time to do the trigger shot and then we'll know when it's uh, egg retrieval day, which is really exciting. And I don't know if I said it before, but the plan is to do a frozen transfer. The reason for that is because we are going to have our embryos uh, genetically tested and that's because uh, I'm 35 Chad is 34 and we have had two pregnancies since having our son who is now nine and those have both ended in miscarriages uh, Chad's lab work and uh, semen analysis uh, analysis is semen analysis, plural, I'm not sure. <laughs> they have came back fine. Uh, his numbers were a little low for a while, but we adjusted some things and they've been fine. The doctor is not concerned about them. And then I had my SHG, which you guys saw in the last video, and everything looked great with my uterus. There was no polyps, no fibroids, no scar tissue or anything like that. Uh, I was tested for blood clotting disorders, autoimmune issues. All of that came back fine. My other labs came back fine. My thyroid, everything is fine. So the thing that makes the most sense is that uh, the last two pregnancies that we've had have ended just because of 
um, genetically abnormal uh, embryos or babies. Um, so yeah, we're hoping that by genetically testing our embryos that we can prevent another miscarriage. I know that there are situations where people will do genetic testing on their embryos and not have any normal embryos. And that doesn't mean that you will have a miscarriage or that there, there will be anything wrong with the baby if the pregnancy does continue. Um, there's a lot of mixed reviews, I guess, uh, mixed feelings uh, with genetically testing your embryos because from my understanding from talking to the doctor is they, I guess it's a, like a biopsy, the outer part, but not the actual embryo. So the outer part could have an issue, but the actual baby could be fine. I'm not sure exactly on how that is, but something like that where you might be told that your embryo is genetically abnormal when really the embryo itself is fine. It's just the outer portion of the cells or something like that. Um, so I'm not sure what we would do in a situation where all of our embryos test um, abnormal. I assume we would go ahead and transfer and just pray that it works. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan. Um, it takes several, several weeks for them to get the uh, embryos tested and back and everything. So the plan is um, we're hoping for, I don't think I said it on here, but if everything goes to plan on here. Oh, it's not on here. Um, I think I said it in my last video. If everything goes to plan, it's looking like the egg retrieval will be like that first week of August. I think it was between the 4th and the 7th. And we will plan on transferring early September. Uh, I had mentioned in my last video that Chad and Garrett and I were going to go on vacation uh, mid-August and we have canceled that trip after talking to my nurses. Um, I'm just worried that if the egg retrieval does happen uh, later, like closer to the 7th, that I'm just not going to feel up to going on vacation. I also can't swim or be in a hot tub or anything. so. Uh, yeah, we just went ahead and canceled that. And I do get to go on a girl's trip at the end of August with my mother-in-law, uh, sister-in-law, her mom, and my best friend. And we're taking Garrett and uh, my best friend's daughter. So that'll be fun. And it'll be a good way for me to kind of de-stress and relax before it's time to come back and do the transfer. So that's the plan as of now um i plan on recording uh once the injections start and uh doctor's visits follicle scans and all that stuff to keep you guys in the loop but that's all i have for now and i just wanted to share everything with you so uh make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so that you'll be notified whenever i make another video and I will talk to you guys soon. Charlie, get off the counter. Bye guys.